All right, folks. Please welcome Abby Barbier, who is going to talk about his work with Oasis. <laughs> Dental schema for online identity accountability. So we wanted to talk a little bit about IDEA and Oasis, and I couldn't come up with a smart title. So this was half from Oasis, half from IDEA, and then whatever it means, it means. So let's say what it means now. That's, that's why I refuse to say the title when I introduce you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> OK, so uh, two parts of this uh, presentation. Basically, setting the stage for digital identity as a core uh, component of your identity journey versus digitized analog identity. And this is the big difference that we need to be aware of as we go forward. Now we have the tools to have a digital identity ecosystem. In the older days, we had multiple digitized versions of you from the analog world. So what are we doing here? Uh, Status-wise, uh, where we are now, we have a big mess, a lot of uh, no trust, no accountability. You could uh, assume any identity online. The verification and validation depends on who's validated you. So we got us uh, issues in terms of trust and accountability. We don't have it in a consistent manner. And this is part of the core problems that we wanted to solve. So why we have that? Because from a user perspective, you are an account for a relying party. So the end uh, result is you get onboarded, you are an account. Most of the time, you get the services related to an account. The enrollment and validation is some form of a binding between your form of identity in the context of the relationship of, of that account relationship. But the user is always bombarded with multiple onboarding and uh, identity document sharing. And, and from the user perspective, it's a big mess because you're always leaking data, leaking, leaking, leaking. Even for corporations that have a privacy by design, guess what? After the first round, you know, you have derived data about you, which could be as good as the original data. So you are not really protecting yourself. There were some solutions for privacy using this blockchain or using, uh, you know, privacy laws. It all leaks. You know, end of the day, we don't have what it takes to have accountability applies plus privacy enhancement in a way that's consistent and uh, doable for everybody. So decentralization came to the rescue and the self-sovereign uh, <clears throat> identities people put the banner on and said, we're going to protect everybody. And you as a user is equal to everybody else. So you is a peer, are a peer. This is the core foundation. This is easier said or not. In the real world, there is no peers. There is someone wanting a service, and there is a service provider. And if you don't want to pay for the service and get benefits of what's available, guess what? You are not at the upper hand. You are at the lower hand. So if you have verifiable credentials and verifiable identity about you, about your wallet, with no proper governance system in the ecosystem, you will leak more, uh, more accurate information. So <laughs> this is not bad, because a relying party or a verifier that's not trustworthy, they will ask more than what they need. And now, if you have your driving license, they get the data from your driving license. You know? User want the service. User should not be a, the enforcer of their privacy rules. They should be aware how to do it, but the reliance should be on what's given to them from the end system. And this makes sense because, you know, like w the way we're going, you know, the market for, for uh, verifiable credentials and, and wallets is almost $2 trillion by in 10 years from today. So everybody is going toward wallet, wallet-based type services. Um, the wallet will be, become your new browser. And if we don't set the proper rules and regulations now, we will get this into that market, but you will not have very much options as an end consumer. The wallets will be controlled by, by the big players. And this is not good for anybody. And the reason for that is you don't want to uh, create the whole decentralization and they rely on one or two uh, providers. So this is where we, you know, we need to make it simple. It's very difficult uh, today and very complex. So you know why it is uh, the verifiable credential on its own, there is work in W3C doing it. 
JSON, JSON LD, schemas, the extension, a lot of fight of what is uh, in there or not. The core data model of the credential is extensible. The um, attributes in that uh, uh, verifiable credential, some are optional. Meaning, quote unquote, the way it's designed now to simplify the process and have a consistent schema and context across transactions, you have to rely on a verifiable presentation, which means the wallet is in the middle because that part is coming from the wallet. Now the wallet is making decisions on behalf of the user. From a verifier perspective, we got a problem now. The verifier needs to trust the issuer, but also the wallet provider, which makes things more complex. So what we need here is uh, streamline. How can we simplify that? We did this in FIDO. FIDO is a pure example of uh, a, a cooperative effort to take something difficult like PKI and making it much simpler to use because there is a community and a minimum trust. And I think this the digital uh, decentralized digital identity, the whole ecosystem needs something like FIDO to come in and say, look, we need to do the minimum viable solution here and make it uh, simple but also usable. So this is what I think we should do. The difficulty with this, it's uh, the governance. Uh, the governance, you cannot have one governance system to rule them all. And this is part of the issue is with the dead. The dead re uh, require a universal resolver, but anybody on earth can have their own uh, dead method. And now the browsers need to support what? Uh, it become a big mess. So the browser will end selecting the winners. Um, the, we, we, this is another anti-competitive type thing. So we need to have a proper res resolution without having bottlenecks somewhere, okay? And simplification is the rule for that. In summary, like, you know, from a user perspective, I, may, I want to do, uh, deal with more, one or more wallet, but my credential is the same, irrespective of which wallet they live with. From a verifier endpoint, you know, I want to rely on a credential, but I need to make sure I can trust the issuer. And end of the day, I need minimum interference with the, uh, with the wallet. So I need to trust the wallet, but the role of the wallet should be minimal. So I think this is the core assumption that we're doing with what we're doing. There is a lot of benefits on this because now we can have core credentials in a wallet that bootstrap your transaction like a KYC credential. The issuer of your, uh, uh, of, of your credential can participate in the process of providing a service for you. For example, if you have a core uh, KYC credential, let's say first name, last name, you know, you don't need date of birth, you don't need uh, residence, you need enough information for a verifier or a relying party on the back end to uniquely onboard you to their system. Because end of the day, you have to live under database. If you don't live under database, they can ask you questions because this is how their back end system work. So the onboarding has to fulfill the requirements of the verifier. And we need to keep that in mind. Now, we need to do this where the verifier has to ask minimal number of questions of you, from you uh, through core uh, or, uh, Oracle uh, credentials that uh, we, we use them for that. And uh, if they need more information, the governance system will be maybe the issuer will participate in answering questions. For example, you want to gamble, okay? The issuer can attest you a resident of uh, New York. The, the gambler, the, they don't need to know your home address in New York, but the issuer that issued you, they don't need to issue you a credential to say you are a resident of New York. This supplementary service can come as part of, of the governance ecosystem. The idea behind here is the center of gravity of trust become per the service and the community of users, because we cannot build a top level global governance ecosystem from the get go. This is a new technology. You have to bootstrap it little by little, okay? And this is what the foundation that we want to do. Well, how we're doing that, we're starting a new work in Oasis called the Lightweight Verifiable Credential and Schema TC. And the purpose of this TC is let's have the minimum viable credential that could be used for KYC, for healthcare, and for financial, what is needed. And then we will assume the anchor of trust for those through the minimum viable uh, trust uh, ecosystem is done through the providers. If you don't want your provider to know, because like part of the privacy, the provider should not know when the credential is used, you, we can introduce or the uh, ecosystem allow you to do uh, trusted brokers, okay? And you, but the broker become part of uh, whoever the industry decide it is and who the user will support. So we get uh, flexibility. 
Okay, so there is always part of the trade-off how to, how to do that. So in there, we made the big decisions uh, within the CC. The first decision we made that we're gonna go with uh, JSON verifiable credential, JSON LD. JSON is a subset of JSON LD, so we are not doing anything bad here because end of the day, uh, the extensions are available where it is. We're gonna support the JOT. Uh, um, based uh, uh, verifiable credential. So the schema and the contacts will be based on the open ID, IANA. If we need extensions to it, we'll extend it, but so far it's so good. The identity assurance levels, we're gonna use the open ID for, uh, for identity assurance. The difference with the open ID verifiable assurance today, it's a negotiation, you know, uh, uh, protocol. We want upfront, you know, to say this is the assurance level as expressed in the context of OpenID, but it's uh, in the header of the JOT token, you know the metadata of it. So whoever is parsing it know what they're gonna get from the beginning. So you can learn about that a bit, uh, uh, offline. Whoever wants to accept that credential, they know whether the database will fit the requirements or not. There will be no optional entities in the credential, we will fill all the requirements, so the template will give you a complete set without, uh, so you know, every entry in that credential as issued per, per this TC will have those attributes attested to at a given assurance level per, per the template. And I think this become your, uh, like, like your ACE card around. So you can, this is your core. So you know, if you need more, you can, uh, from the negotiation, know upfront before you adopt the service that this is needed, okay? So we have tons of uh, use cases to do that, and I'm not gonna worry about it for now, but if you have questions, ask me. We are not uh, swimming on our own lane. We understand that uh, there is a lot of efforts uh, happening. The HS uh, has its own effort, with Anil John is uh, funding uh, stuff for the uh, like import-export, uh, uh, you know, but their requirement is much more difficult because their use cases is much more deep um, they want uh, a lot of their interoperability on Chappie and you know across. To me, the transport layer is irrelevant because the trust is in the credential across. It's self-asserted uh, credential meaning, quote unquote, which will tie very well with Pesky and the wallet toward Pesky and anchor of trust. So it will become a drop and go with uh, a FIDO solution. Okay, so we want minimum interoperability with minimum viable uh, governance without uh, boiling the ocean where we need a big organization to, to do it. The trust becomes through, uh, anchor of trust is through trust of whoever uh, trusts your uh, credential, it becomes your anchor of trust. So the motivation to be a good citizen is in the ecosystem, okay? So how, this is how, how, how it is. Okay, so where we are, we started the TC about three months ago, we made tons of decisions, and then we found that everyone in the TC is very busy, 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 busy. We are not writing in the document the decisions we made. And miracle happened uh, two weeks ago, we hired an editor. So now we have someone that will uh, put the first version. And the next authenticate, I'll give you the final, you know, but we are rolling now, okay? This, uh, we're relying, well, nothing we're inventing anew. We, we, we don't want to, we don't know how to invent things. We want to just profile things, simplify, okay? So no inventions here. So we're gonna rely on Nest, OpenID, Connect, um, the W3C is the core. We're not doing any of the unvoc VCs. It's too difficult. And uh, we will, uh, we looked at Deadcom with trust over IP, but uh, I think Deadcom, it's uh, a little bit overweight now. It needs to be streamlined. So for adoption, the best way going forward is to rely on an uh, OpenID API end call. So the way the architecture is designed for a user or adopter, they will just have an API call to do whatever we're doing. And it will be a part of your OpenID infrastructure. Plug and play, do, no replacement, okay? We will take this to the ITU to standardize it, and you know, it become more global. And uh, you know, so the accountability and the uh, uh, purpose of this TC came because of the accountable digital identity. This is within our framework. We have a cloud wallet, and we require a portable verifiable credential. And uh, the requirement of it said we don't want to do it at ADI because Oasis is much more into standardization body. We moved it into, into Oasis. So it's exciting time, you know, come join us. We're open for criticism, you know, and I have, I've, I'm not surprised if somebody say you, you are wrong. I mean, I've been told this so many times, I'm used to it, but 
tell me I'm wrong, <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> not telling me. So I'd rather know that I'm wrong early in the game, not late in the game. So that's the end of the talk. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. OK, does anyone have any questions for Abby? Or to tell Abby that Abby is wrong? I'm just wrong. That's, that's good, too. <laughs> OK, so, so again, there seems to be multiple efforts in the same space happening you know, at once. How does how how are we going to know like what's going to win the day? You know what? Like you know yeah, what I mean? Like I, I, how 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 are these different different initiatives going to like? It, do, do we need some to fail? Do we need you know? You see, depending where you are in Europe, they are really putting the foundation with you know. I mean, Steve, if you okay. if you want to talk, yes, Steve. No, finish, and then Steve has a question. Yeah, so in yeah. Europe, they are putting the proper, like, you know, they are very more, adv more advanced. And, and in the US, you know, we, we or North America, we cut us uh, issues uh, because we don't have a centralized identity. The, our digital right. identity infrastructure is really a big mess. And so the trust uh, and governance is not there. So, you know, I think the industry needs to take the initiative. We're seeing foundation of small efforts uh, coming down, but it's uh, targeted for specific use cases. Workforce, B2B, B2C is the first, uh, you know, but for the general type public, it's not there. But uh, we have the foundation of making it. Like if you look at the IRS and the IRS using a specific vendor, so you can get authenticated, you know, this is, could be the foundation because now we have enough um, uh, like uh, input where there is enough density where someone can issue credentials, but it's outside uh, like a, a company and or it needs to become more public so the users can have trust more of it. So, and you know, but I think we are, we are late to the game. It's, we need to, 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 to get maturity. Thanks, Abby. Steve Wilson, um, since you asked me, I don't, I don't think you're wrong at all. I think that your call for FIDO-like um, structures and, and, um, and, and, and ways of working in the, in the DID community, I think is spot on. Um, I think what is wrong, and maybe it's just me, the QR code on the right for me doesn't work. <laughs> so I just wanted to point that out. Um, but I, I like your talk. I, I, I think that that... The QR code is wrong. The success of FIDO and seeing, seeing some, um, some repeat of that FIDO model yeah. in, um, in your area I think is spot on. Yeah, because FIDO said, look, PKI is difficult. We need to simplify it. And now, verifiable credentials become a project. You know, you look at the, what's happening in W3C and the use cases, they want to boil the whole ocean. You know, um, the, you know it's part of the bigger picture, the Web 3.0 versus Web 3. <laughs> and I think, you know, the Web 3.0 is behind the foundation of Web uh, 3.0 relying on like everything ledger based and uh, this uh, yeah it's not gonna happen and i don't want uh, the verifiable credential as a solution to be dependent on the success of an underlying uh, model that may or may not make it the verifiable credential is our go-to-market opportunity to really liberate the user from multiple enrollment and uh, always presenting get vetted over and over again you know and an ecosystem should be where there is universal vetters Trusted vetters, you get vetted once, and your driving license gets exposed to one user where you know where the data is. After that, you have derived credential and metadata coming. Um, if we don't go there, we're not gonna ever solve, uh, you know, fraud. You know, the fraud uh, it, it will keep going on, irrespective of what you do. Oh, good. This is sort of coming off of a, a discussion that we had at IIW last week, and I think there was a discussion about how there are all of these organizations and everyone is trying to solve for all the use cases simultaneously. But at the same time, it's very difficult to tell some organization, you need to go away, you know, and s because then you end up with a political battle, not a te technological battle. And so I guess the thought that sort of came out of that is perhaps rather than trying to 
build that one standard to rule them all. It's to get those organizations to specialize. Because I think each of them, if you examine them, sort of has something that they do better than the others, but none of them has the solution for all the use cases. And so maybe the, the answer is to actually just figure out who's best at what, and instead of trying to get them to all go away, just get them to specialize on that thing, and then pull it all together. Agreed. And the core foundation concept here, the trust is per category. The community know whom they should trust, and you're not going to have one entity to be trusted for all. The end day is the ease of processing of the credential. The more complex you make it, the adoption will be slower. And then there are few organizations that can spend the money to really talk to multiple wallets <clears throat> and verify this stuff, right? So it becomes centralized. So the whole effort of to, to decentralize the end going back because you made it so complex, go back to centralization. So what's the point? You know, <laughs> we, we don't want that to happen. It has to be where everybody can participate, you know? I'm walking. For the people on the stream wondering what's going on. Um, Anthony from in New Zealand. Um, we've been looking at like verified credentials for um, paperless travel and stuff like that. So we use like IATA standards and stuff like that as well. The main use cases that we're sort of dealing with with all these different scenarios is we trust all of these different issuers. The main thing is making this easier for customers is actually being able to use multiple issuers in one presentation. That's, I think, the part I'm missing in the schema part because that's the main use case is I have three, four different issuers that I need to present at one time. And they all need to be verified with their own schemas, not a single schema. Come join our TC. <laughs> Yeah. Because if the wallet makes the wrong assumption about the context, the verifiable presentation is not accurate, right? And then, you know, end of the day is the, within the context. So up from, this is why we standardized on OpenID, okay? Because it's pretty well known. This is what we say, this is JOT token, because most probably the simplest plug and play is have a JOT uh, token. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty well known. It's part of OAuth. People understand it. You're not going through an educational uh, sc uh, scheme. And this is why we said the EKYC credential, we have uh, like a template one, template two, template three. Very simple. Whatever you need to be bootstrapped. If you need more, you know, you can go back and ask for attestation. But you could do that through, you know. A plus, you know, like uh, it's not the verifiable credential that's also a problem. The manifest, uh, the uh, um, uh, negotiation who, the, by the uh, verifiable credential issuer. For the user is like, get confused, you know, what uh, I'm gonna offer you for what and and. <clears throat> With our uh, static, simple credential, you don't need to do the uh, manifest uh, component, you know. What the issuer will just say, this is template one, template two, template, you just pick and choose. So from the beginning, everything is, is known. You know, we can have extensions later and then, but again, once you start talking about extensions, uh, extensions without solving the 90% core use cases, okay, uh, we uh, complicate the issue. I don't want to fall in that trap. So the TC is very focused. Let's get our core credentials out, you know. Let's make sure the assurances are, are good, that have trusted issuers to participate. And then we can open that through a nonprofit organization, <coughs> which you as a user can uh, participate in. And then you will have uh, the kill key as a user. And this is part of the stuff, you know. You don't want to, you can withdraw out of the ecosystem or kill a credential on your, uh, uh, as you wish because this is a, a core component for adoption. And the stronger binding to the wallet could uh, mean that you need more biometric authentication, and this could be a part of a provider that provides a service for you. So, but you as a user, you need that option. So, you know, the roadmap, this will be the core entity that flow in the ecosystem, but there will be the beginning of a, a governance ecosystem that will try, uh, start by having a nonprofit, uh, making sure that your identity is trusted uh, with someone not there to sell your data or any of that stuff. So it will be open for the communities. So this is the thinking, you know, at least uh, as, uh, as of this stage. All right.
right. Great job, Abby. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Abby.